You know, I was just sitting here thinking that uh, winter's coming. And with winter come a whole new set of challenges for RV transport. Um, let me show you some of the things that I'm doing um, for the winter that you may want to consider. And you may have other ideas. If you've got some ideas that you see in this video that I may be missing, put those in the comments down below. Love to hear what you're doing for your RV transport truck for the winter. Let me show you what we're doing here in Freedom. One of the things that uh, I was told to do in the winter time is make sure I've got a all-terrain tire. And uh, I was showing this to a guy, or he was watching the video. Hey, cat. And uh, skinny crawfish, don't give me grief about my truck tires. He said that these are not even all terrain tires, that these are a joke, but um, guys, I've already showed you the extended tank. I've already showed you the fifth wheel and I have showed you the, the toolbox, you know, so that's, this is something, this is the way I run my truck. And I really like the way my truck is set up. I do have to drop my tailgate to get into my toolbox, but um, oh, let me show you this. Now this is not anti-gel. Dodge with their beautiful CP4 pump does not tell you when you buy the truck that you need to run a fuel additive. But this is the fuel additive that I'm running. It is endorsed by Cummins. And on the back it says, this diesel fuel additive will not void your warranty. So um, that's something that I, I thought was important. <coughs> Guys, I was an electrician by trade for a long time, so I've got a multimeter. I've got an interior trim tool, a pair of wire cutters, butt splices, some Velcro. Um, this is just a small, you know, electrical tool kit so I can work with electrical issues. There's fuses in this box for my truck, and I still have yet to find the super minis that I need. Something you may want to consider when washing your truck. Uh, this summer, I use these quite a bit to uh, get the bugs off the chrome and stuff. Uh, the rest of this stuff you guys all know about. Load torsion bars, battery breakaway box, DLT triangles. Yeah, you know this stuff. Everybody's got this stuff. Let me turn these lights out. One of the must-haves for any truck operating in this great country is an American flag. Doesn't have to be like this. It could be any way that you want to run your American flag, sticker, something. But if you're an American and you RV transport, you need a flag in your truck. So make sure you've got a flag in your truck. Um, I keep my uh, Indiana plates on my visor and that one just slips in behind, gives me a good, easy, convenient place to store um, my extra plate. Most of you have not seen this, but uh, I wanted to show you this. That is my support for the American Armed Forces, specifically the Marine Corps. I think the Marines are the baddest, uh, baddest of the bad, the best of the best. You know, as far as regular troops, special forces, I know we could talk about different stuff, but as far as general forces, just every man in the unit against every man in another unit, it's the Marine Corps. Hoorah. So one of the things that I've got is an iPad and, and this cup holder, iPad holder, you know, and the cord plugs in. Now I've got two different cords, one for my phone and one for my iPad. I've got two different auxiliary plugs in this truck and they're color coded. So I know which cords going where, so I can easily identify which cord I'm dealing with. The phone mounts on the dash and it is, uh, it works as a film filming unit as well as as well as a, a place just to hold the phone for GPS. I like to run my GPS on my phone so it's up in my line of vision as I travel. And then um, you know, music or whatever is played down, communications are play is taken care of right here. And uh I can take care of that while I'm sitting here. Paper towels, must have. I've 
since I've gotten in freedom, I've changed up my head position. I actually sleep with my head in this position instead of at the back. Uh, that's uh, my bedding. The truck is a mess right now. I'm doing some laundry and stuff, but uh, I keep Gatorades, waters, nuts. Um, if you don't have a, uh, a good piss bottle, you can go and get the medical bottles, the medical urinals, etc. I found this at Walmart in the clearance rack for like two bucks, and it's within reach. This is actually my secondary bottle. My other bottle's inside getting cleaned out, but um, <clears throat> you don't have to stop to piss if you've got one of these. It's got a good secure lid that won't leak on it, and then when you get out of the truck for fuel or whatever, you just you, you dump that down the grating. You're going to need a pair of uh, work gloves. I've got some pictures of my family, some snacks, um, writing material, pens. I've got a pair of binoculars. So when you get out west and you see those elk and you want to really look, tropic like it's hot, you can uh, stop and look at the uh, elk or wildlife. For the truck, I keep a pair of little wire snips because I put my temporary plates on with uh, wire ties or uh, tie wraps. And so I keep tie wraps in the truck to uh, put on those temporary tags, clean up wipes. This is extra, extra pins, clips. These are my trash bags. I've got an air gauge. Sort of my extra accessory pieces for uh, trailer hitches and, and fifth wheel pins and stuff like that are in here. Every, every body should have a sword with them at all times. Keep your sword handy. So uh, in the back, I've got, you know, some easy to eat food. Paper bowls, paper plates, Ziploc bags. That's uh, crackers and soups and uh, cheese and crackers, some meats, you know, chewing gum, just stuff that I'm gonna eat. We suffer a lot from not having vegetables on the road. So I keep these in the truck. I like the size of these, they make a bigger size, but I like these because I, I can get my servings of vegetables and I'm not struggling trying to drink a whole, you know, 12 ounce can of V8, which is disgusting, but it's good for you. Um, that's about it for this. I keep shirts, delivery shirts, and I'll probably do a video talking about deliveries and uh, you know what I what I think we as professional drivers, the way we sh I saw a post on one of the uh, forums about you know professional drivers and looking like a slob when you go to deliver. That's something that the guy that I learned from that has been doing this for 17 years taught me. Don't be a slob when you deliver. So I've got delivery shirts that I keep hung up back here, but I keep a chair and I have used this, especially when I'm in the, the yard or on a, on a downtime that uh, <clears throat> myself or somebody else has a place to sit down. But that's the basics. And then um, my clothes bag and laundry bag, they go in here in this area and then you can see i've got storage for food i usually put my food storage area my food storage over in that area long sleeve shirt i always keep my laptop with me so i can pay bills and uh, sometimes the ipad and the phone don't communicate well i make sure that i take my ipad with me, or my laptop with me so i can pay my bills on the road or whatever um <clears throat> My bathroom bag, inside this bag is just my toiletries. Here's my other pee bottle. This is my primary pee bottle, iPad. This is towels and toiletries, you know, just stuff to wash up. I like having the smaller bag for uh, carrying in the truck stops rather than my main laundry bag. And I keep, you know, five to six pairs of clothes so I can stay out and change clothes every, every day of the week. I usually don't do that. I usually run three or four days in between showers, but I could change clothes every day if I needed to. 
One of the things I've added is wool socks to this bag and long pants, getting away from the shorts and the t-shirts for driving because I'm starting to get out of the truck and it being a lot cooler. Um, I've got a zero degree, it's actually a minus 10 sleeping bag. It's a down bag I'm putting in the truck in case I get stranded or whatever <clears throat> and the truck's not running. I've used that sleeping bag camping all the way down to uh, 18 degrees, 12 degrees in Chaco Canyon and I know that bag will keep me warm. Um, I'm also adding a pair of insulated coveralls. I was looking for a jacket, a good pair of, of windproof. You know, Carhartt tends to be windproof. <clears throat> I can't find my Carhartt jacket so I'll probably have to buy myself another one, but I'm putting this stuff in my truck. Not all that stuff is needed right now. In fact, a lot of it is probably a little early for it, but uh, you know, I stay out. Once I go out, I stay out for three or four or five weeks at a time. And uh, with the weather change up north, um, you know, I can see us getting into some snow in uh, mid to late October. Um, so I need to go ahead and start getting that stuff in the truck. I know this, I've got to get some anti-gel. I've got to stop at uh, Mayberry uh, and pick up some snow chains in case I end up running out west, which, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And uh, we're going to run, I'm going to try to run extremely hard until November, December. And, uh, you know, after that, I think the weather's going to slow us down a lot anyway. And uh, there may not be any loads. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing to outfit my truck right now for the winter time. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, give me a thumbs up, that helps. Drop a comment below. And if you see something that I don't have that you think I might need, um, drop that in the comments as well. As well, I love to hear what you got to say and your suggestions. <clears throat> Guys, that's it for this one. Uh, know that I love you and God bless you all.